Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unitronics webinar. My name is Ophir Levy, and I'm the head of the technical support in Unitronics. We are continuing our locked in series, and today's topic is Unistream alarms. As we can see, in two days on Thursday, we are going to have another webinar about Unistream Modbus communication. We will start with a few words about Unitronics and its products, and then we will proceed to the alarm learning. Unitronics was established in 1989 and is the pioneer and leader of the all-in-one PLC and HMI. We have over 180 distributors in 60 countries, more than 1 million installations worldwide, serving almost any kind of industry, such as water treatment, food and beverage, automotive, pharmaceutical, and more. Unitronics manufactures more than 1,000 units per day and have a large and loyal recurrent business. This is basically our worldwide distribution map. We have one unified programming environment for programming PLC code, design HMI screens, configure communication, build web servers, pages, and more. Unitronics offer four product lines, PLCs for simple and small machines, up to PLCs for complex and advanced projects. Our high-end products line support over 2,000 IOs for one PLC. The software and support are at no cost. Building new machines requires sophisticated control and automation that can only be delivered through multiple solutions and components, including PLC, HMI, VFD, and even servo drives. As all components must be integrated, selecting the right combination is crucial to the efficiency and success of the machine development project. So why risk multi-vendor complexity? It is possible to source components from different suppliers. This allows flexibility in selecting each element according to highly specific criteria, but it's almost always carry high cost in time, effort and hassle at every stage of the process. Time as researching different products from, di from multiple companies is time consuming as well as confuses with different others and delivery schedules. Multiple contacts, who do you call when you have questions or problems? How do you identify the root of the problem with so many vendors involved? Unitronics all-in-one approach means dealing only with one vendor. This translates to less research time, simplified ordering, coordinate and delivery, one single point of contact for support. So choosing single vendor solution, Unitronic solution offer a better option, an easy way to avoid hassles, save time, and be confident that everything will work together exactly as you need it to. Here we can see how uh, during the last uh, few months and years, we expanded our offering. We can see here the, here the Unilogic running on a PC communicating with Unistream PLC, which communicate with our local IOs, remote IOs, Unitronics VFDs, and now even communicating with Unitronic servo drives and motors. Today's webinar will be about the alarms in Unistream series. So let's have a few words about the Unistream series. We have them in uh, several versions, let's say. We have the Unistream modular, uh, which comes with three sizes of uh, screens, seven inch, 10 inch, and 15 inch. Uh, you can see here the resolutions. The 10-inch 10, 10 can come also as a, in a multi-touch version. 
you can snap on the back of these uh, unit stream panels the CPU, IOs, and communication models. And of course, this uh, is our high end series supporting many features and communication capabilities such as Ethernet IP, web server, sending SMS and email, remote accessing via VNC, also web server, protocols like FTP, MQTT for accessing the cloud, SQL for accessing databases and more. We have also the Unistream built-in series, which these are basically powerful PLCs in a superbly compact hardware profile. They are coming with a built-in I.O., different combination of I.O. to be selected from our catalog, and also in two versions, Pro and not Pro, which is basically gives you the option to select the right product according to the requirement of the application. These are coming in two sizes of screen, 5 inch and 7 inch, same resolution, 800 on 480. And of course, supporting all the features of Unistream as described before. And another version of our Unistream PLC is a PLC with no HMI. As we can see here, this is basically a PLC that we can also have a built-in I.O., connect and expand I.O. To the left of the PLC and expand communication models at the left. And basically, you can, of course, expand any one of the Unistream that we saw before, and this one with an expansion adapters uh, with the option to get up to 2000 IO. What is very special about this PLC that you can see that physically it doesn't have an HMI, but it has a virtual HMI. When we say virtual HMI, it means that when you build the application in UniLogic and write the code, you still have the option to build HMI screens uh, and also web server screens. And then you can use basically uh, any screen from our uh, panels like the 15 inch, 10 inch, five inch, seven inch, or even use tablet or mobile phone or even third party display and connect by VNC to the Unistream PLC and control it like you are standing next to it. Now it's time to start and see our alarms feature and its capabilities. The Unistream alarm system provides an efficient method of boosting your application and safety level. Unistream Alarm provides notification or alarms events to the machine operator by a set of built-in HMI displays. Okay, while this alarm displayed on the screen, the PLC application of course continues to run and this of course includes both letter and HMI. So let's see the features that we have in our alarm system. So we can set up the alarm in a moment. We'll create a demo and see how we are setting up the alarm. The HMI comprises the alarm banner that we can select whether it, it will appear on the HMI in case we have an alarms which are active. Alarm summary which is a screen that displays all our active and inactive alarms. Status viewer widget for the alarms to manage the alarm, disable the alarm, enable alarms. History widget to view the history of the alarms. And even the option to log the alarms into our SD card for future analysis. The alarm also provides us a struct. We'll see later on how we can use the struct of the alarm to get indications and use it in our logic to send an email, send SMS, activate any logic we want when we are having an alarm from our, one of our alarm 
uh, configuration. So this is basically how the alarm summary looks like. In a moment, of course, we will see all of that in Unilogic. Here we can see uh, some more details about the alarm summary. As I mentioned, in the alarm summary, we can see all the active and inactive alarms. We have the possibility to, to acknowledge alarms, clear the alarms. We can see more details about the alarms by clicking on the blue eye uh, button. We can sort the alarm according to time, group, name, and so on. We will see it later on. The alarm status viewer widget, as I said before, provides us the option to see the status of the alarm. Okay, and most important, to manage the alarm. When we say manage the alarm, we have the, the possibility to disable an alarm. Okay, that means that once we disable an alarm, let's say due to a faulty sensor or any other reason during commissioning, uh, we can disable it and then we will not be bothered with any alarm from the specific ID that we disabled, or we can shelve the alarm for a specific time, meaning that when this time is passed, the alarm becomes uh, enabled again. The alarm history widget provides us the option to view all the alarms that were already cleared from the alarm summary, and we can see them here in the alarm history. Also in the alarm history, we have the possibility to sort the alarm according to many kinds of options like time, ID, and so on. And the alarm log, the system automatically logs the alarm into an SD card. Of course, uh, we must place the SD card in the SD card uh, slot in the Unistream. And then basically these alarms will be logged into a file. Uh, we have the option basically to Sorry, we can log the alarms. It's, it's logging it automatically uh, into a different uh, events such as uh, status change on and off uh, while we acknowledge the alarm, shelve the alarm, disable or enable the alarm, and so on. The alarm log, uh, when the alarm log reaches 10,000 rows, it will be automatically zipped and closed. Uh, the format of the alarm which is saved is both as XML and CSV and uh, we can also later on take this of course al alarm log and view it in our PC for later analysis. And the alarm struct, uh, as I mentioned before, we can see here in the screenshot we can see here all the tags that the alarm struct provides such as a uh, uh, group state uh, alarm state uh, whether there are any alarms which are waiting to be acknowledged or whether they're they are cleared and of course as i said all these tags can be used uh, when we want to activate anything in our logic show show some indication on, on the HMI according to these um, tags. Okay, so now we can continue and start our demo in Unilogic. So what we can see here, this is uh, the program, programming environment of Unilogic. And in this demo, uh, we will create two alarms one uh, analog alarm and one digital alarm. So I will start with uh, building uh, some, some uh, elements on the HMI in order to simulate the alarms. So let's go to the HMI. <clears throat> Here, basically, I will create, for example, an alarm for the analog, I will create alarm for uh, temperature. Let's say high, if, if the temperature exceeding some 
set point and I want to generate an alarm. And I will create also a digital alarm for uh, when, let's say, a, an emergency button is pressed and I want to generate alarm from it. So for simulating it, I will start, let's say, I will put some text here. And I will just label it as a temperature, take um, a numeric box, and in the numeric box, I will create a new tag. I will call it temperature as well. And I will uncheck the read only, so I will be able to enter values in this numeric box. We can also add a nice, uh, let's say, slider. So we can also change the temperature using a slider. So I can link the same slider to the temperature. So this will be my uh, temperature simulation. And now I will create a binary image for simulating the emergency button. So let's just double click, add the binary image. Okay, we can resize it. So let's uh, pick two images for on and off. So for the off, I will pick, let's say the emergency off. And for the on, I will pick the picture for emergency on. Okay. Let's link a tag to the emergency button. So I will call it emergency button. And we want also to create an action that when we press on the emergency button, we will toggle its tag. So I will select toggle and emergency button. So that's it. We created our analog and digital widgets for simulating the alarms. Now let's continue to our alarm setup. So in the Solution Explorer, we can see alarms. Let's click on it. And let's start by reviewing the Properties window. OK, so in the Properties window, first we have the option to select what will be our date and time format. Uh, this is will appear in the alarm summary or alarm history. So we can select the format, how the date and time will look like in the widget. We can select what will be the severity colors for each one of these uh, severities, like critical, major, minor warning. So we, we can select colors. I will leave it as a default. By the way, as you could see in the presentation, for any alarms that appears in the summary, uh, it will be colored according to its severity. The display mode, uh, whether it will be the default or simple, basically the simple uh, eliminate some of the columns uh, to have uh, less columns, like let's say it eliminates the alarm ID if it's not significant for you to, to show it. And here now we are getting into the banner attributes uh, we said that uh, uh, when the alarms will turn on, we have the option to show a banner on the screen. We will see it in a moment. And uh, here we can define what will be the banner color, what will be the location of the banner on the top of the screen or bottom of the screen. Uh, I can basically, in a moment, we can show you a preview of it, how it looks like. Uh, how the banner, what will be the banner type, uh, large or small? The small is just an icon of, of a bell that shows you whether uh, red or green. And large, we'll see in a moment, it's, uh, the banner is basically showing in, uh, in a text box like a marquee text that shows all the active alarms. Okay, we can select when the banner will appear uh, so we have the option here, whether, let's say if I don't want to 
show it at all uh, when there are no alarms. Uh, the alarm banner contains also a snooze button, which allows me to snooze the banner for a specific time that appears here. And how the alarms will be displayed or stop uh, or will be stop displaying what will be the condition. So here we can select if it will be displayed according to time or group or severity and when it will be stopped displaying according to these options. So the first thing I need to do before adding a new alarm, I have to add a group. We can create up to 32 group of alarms in our system. So I will add the first group. We can rename the group. I will leave it as default. Um, and we have here an optional bit that we can link under suppression. That means that if we turn on this bit, we are going to suppress all the alarms in this group, meaning disable all the alarm in this group. So you understand that since we can link here a bit, you can do it from your ladder code, from your logic. Now, in order to, to create our alarm, we can press here on the link alarm group one. After pressing on it, here we can see automatically one alarm is already defined. Let's create the name of the first of our first alarm. So I will call it high temperature. Okay, we can define the severity and the priority. Let's say I will select severity major. We can define whether the alarm will be displayed on the banner or not, whether it requires acknowledgement. And we have another two optional bits. Suppression, as we said before, we can suppress the whole group or we can suppress individual alarm. Acknowledge bit here, if we will link here a bit, it means that once the operator will acknowledge the alarm, this bit will turn on. Okay, don't be confused. Some uh, customer uh, get confused. They think that the bit which is linked here will, if we turn it on, will acknowledge the alarm. No, this is not true. When the operator acknowledges the alarm, the bit will turn on. For example, let's say you want to create a logic that if the operator acknowledges this alarm, you want to send an SMS to the manager of the factory. Okay, so again, it's, a, it's an optional. You don't have to link anything to it. Now, when we want to configure the condition for the alarm, we'll click on alarm one. And here we'll start configuring the condition. So in our case, since it's a temperature, we will select analog condition. The trigger, of course, will be our tag, the temperature tag. Here we can select the operator. We have many kinds of operators, you see, like equal, greater than, less than, within range, after, out of range, and even a custom which you can define four levels of alarm for one trigger, okay? We will not use it right now. We'll just use the greater than. And the value, in this case, let's say if the, if the temperature is greater than 50 degrees, I want to generate an alarm. We can see that the value doesn't have to be a constant, you can even define a tag here. So that means you can change on the fly the set point for the alarm. But in our case, to make it simple, we will leave it as a constant. Under the advanced button, we have the option for delays, on delay and off delay. The on delay, means that let's say if in our case i will put here five seconds it means that only if the temperature will be greater than 50 more than five seconds then the alarm will be active if it will be only for two seconds and then go back to 50 or 49 then no alarm will be generated 
Uh, this, of course, as you understand, all these options here, the on delay, the off delay, and the dead band are for um, filtering and not sometimes the, the temperature of is, is fluctuating. You don't want to get so many alarms. So you can create the condition for filtering it here. Same goes for off. Uh, basically, we can uh, uh, de decide that uh, only if the value of the temperature will go below uh, 50 and below for more than this time, then the alarm will turn off, will go inactive. The dead band is only for uh, the alarm for definition for going from off from on to off. So, for example, I will just give an example. If I will, if I will put here the value five, it means that only when the alarm, sorry, when the when the temperature will go below uh, 45 and below, then the alarm will become inactive. So you can control it by value and by time. In my case, I will not use a dead band for now. And we have the option to define a description. So, for example, I can write here high temperature in room one. And in the countermeasure, I can write down, uh, please check room one. Okay, we can see in a moment that in our alarm widgets, we are able to see more information about the alarm in this, uh, using this option, the description and countermeasure. Let's define our second alarm. So let's do it quickly. I will add a new alarm. I will give it a name. So here I'll call it emergency button or emergency, let's say emergency pressed. And let's say the severity will be critical. The condition for the alarm, again, I'm clicking on the alarm link. It, I will set the type as a digital. The trigger will be the emergency button. Operator will be when it's go to on. I will not use here any delays. And under description, I can write down emergency button was pressed, please check system, okay? So these are basically the, the way to create the alarm. You see, very easy, very simple. Again, it's not a must to fill all these fields. The most important is to fill the condition and we are done. Okay, so now it's the time uh, to download the application. I will download the application to a controller on my desk, and then we can simulate the alarms. Okay, so let's just download it. Okay, once we are done, I can open the VNC. Okay, so here we can see now our HMI. We can see at the bottom the alarm banner. You can see that now it's in green color because no alarm is active. And we can start by changing the temperature. We can do it, of course, from using the slider. So Right now, I will set it above 50. We can see that since we set a delay of on of five seconds, it will take another five seconds. And then we can see in the banner, the description, uh, sorry, the name of the alarm running here. We can see here, uh, if we click on this icon, we can just minimize the banner, click again, open it. This is the snooze button we discussed before. Uh, if I will trigger also the emergency stop, 
We can see now in the banner both alarms, high temperature and the emergency pressed. By clicking here on this icon, we will basically open the alarm summary. So here is the alarm summary. We can see in the alarm summary the severity, the name of the alarm, the value that it was triggering the alarm, date and time, the change, whether it's acknowledged pending, and we can see more information, as I mentioned before. If we click on the I button, we can see the description, the countermeasure. We have the option to acknowledge and clear the alarm from here, or we can even mark the alarms with these checkboxes that we want to acknowledge and or clear, or we can use here this icon to select all or deselect all, acknowledge and clear. Of course, we are not able to clear now the alarms since they are still active. Um, in a moment, I will uh, set them to be inactive and we will clear them. Using this icon here, as I mentioned before, we have the option to sort the alarm. If we click here, we get all the options for sorting the alarms according to names, according to, according to uh, change, severity, ID and so on. Okay, um, I will right now set the alarm off, so I will put the temperature below 50. We'll set the emergency button back to off. We can see that the banner went back to green. I can still click on the banner to open the alarm summary. You can see here when the alarm went off, Okay, the time and what was the value when it went off. If I click here to acknowledge and clear all, we can see that now, since I cleared everything, there are no more alarm entries. If we want to see these alarms, we have to use our alarms history widget. So let's do it. So I will go offline and I will create now a new screen. Okay, I will call this screen alarm history. And basically, if we scroll all the way down in the toolbox under management tools, we can just double click on the alarm history widget, bring it to the display. Okay, and now I will just need to create a screen navigation. So let me just rename our screen one, I will call it main. And from the alarm history screen, I want to navigate back to the main. So I will take a button, place it on the HMI. I can give it a label main. And under actions, we can add a new action to load the screen back to the main. We will do the same from main to alarm history. So I will add a new button here. We'll give it a label. An action, load screen, alarm history. Okay, so basically we are done. We can download the application and let's navigate to the alarm history to show its alarms. By the way, if I didn't mention it in the, at the beginning, our alarm system support up to 1,024 alarms and up to 32 groups. Okay, so I will open the VNC. Here now we can see the alarm history button. We'll click on it. And we are basically navigated to the alarm history widget. We can see all the alarms that we already cleared. Uh, so basically they appear here. We have the scroll bar to see more alarms in this widget. Of course, as I said, we can 
in the alarm history sold the alarm as well. Okay, the next uh, feature of our alarms is the option to manage the alarms via the HMI. For managing the alarm via the HMI, we have a special widget which is called Alarm Status Viewer. Using the Alarm Status Viewer, we can basically see the status of each alarm and manage it. So let's add a new screen. I will call it Alarm Manage. Let's add the widget. Again, under Management Tools, Alarm Status Viewer. Okay, uh, that's it, very simple. Just double click, edit. We'll create again the screen navigations. So I will just copy and paste the screen navigation I did for the history and paste it here. Go back to the main, create a screen navigation for the alarm manage. I will change the label, alarm manage. And we'll change, of course, the screen navigation to the alarm manage. We can download and test. Right, so now we will jump to the alarm manage. And here we can see, since we defined only two alarms in our system, we can see two lines. We can see the status of the alarm. It's enabled, the state, which is right now off, because the alarms are inactive, whether it's pending for acknowledgement and under action we have here this icon so let's say i will click on this icon and we get basically the description and we have the option whether to disable the alarm or shelve the alarm as we explained in the presentation so just to show you if i will disable the alarm before disabling by the way we can enter a comment that later on in the log we can see why the operator disabled the alarm. So for example, let's say I will write here, um, let's say faulty sensor, okay? And I will just disable the alarm. So we can see now the status is disabled and we can see that if I will go now to the temperature and set it above 50, we will not get an alarm because it's disabled, of course. Okay, and then if I will go back to the manage, enable back the alarm, we can see just in a few seconds that the alarm will be on again. If we go to the summary, we can see here that the alarm was disabled and we can see here that the alarm turned on. Okay, now I want to show you how we can see um, the log, which is uh, saved in the SD card. So there are many ways to access the log. By the way, if we go to the UniApps, these are basically the system screens in uh, the Unistream. Of course, it can be blocked by a password, but right now I just want to show you that if we go to the file browser and into our alarm logs, so we can see here the alarm logs that were created. So one way to access the log is 
just plugging a thumb drive to the Unistream and just, just transfer the file to the thumb drive, doing it manually when you are next to the PLC. Uh, another option, of course, is to send the alarm log by email. If we, right now I'm in online mode and you can see in the struct that automatically we have the name of the alarm log. This help us when we want to send the alarm file by FTP or by email. We can use, of course, the name from, from the struct for sending the alarm. But right now I will use FTP server. I will show you how easy it is to configure it. And then we will access the files in the SD card by FTP. So let's do it. Let's go to the FTP server, define a username, okay, and a password. And we can basically download the application. And in a moment, I will open uh, an FTP client to access the files in the Unistream. Okay, in the meantime, uh, I got a question. What will happen if, if several alarms will be triggered at the same time? How, how it will be displayed? Very simple. It, 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 the alarm summary will just uh, capture all these alarms at the same time and will we'll show all the alarms, each, each alarm in one line, uh, and probably the date and time will be the same. That's it. All right, so uh, here I have a FileZilla. So I will just drag it here. So I, I just put in the FileZilla. Again, it's a free of charge application you can download from uh, the internet. So this is a uh, host name, username and password, and I will quick connect to my SD card. Uh, here is my SD card. And if I will access the alarm log, uh, I can basically, let's say, I will take this uh, CSV file. So let's drag it uh, to my PC. Okay, so I will just put it on the desktop. And let's open the file just to take a look how it looks like. Okay, I did. I didn't. Do, I didn't take the right one. Sorry. Let me just take a look. Never mind. Just uh, let's. Uh, Let's just open one, just anyway, that you can take a look how the logo looks like. Okay, let me just um, change the page layout. So in the log, you can see the date and time the alarm happened, the ID, the group, name of the alarm, the description, severity, the change, the value, and the comment. For example, you can see that uh, uh, Whenever we are uh, disable the alarm, you remember we enter the faulty sensor, and then uh, we can see even the comments that we provided when we disabled the alarm. So you can use this log, as I mentioned, and get it by many ways. Okay, um, one more thing I wanted to show you is the alarm struct. Uh, we already discussed about it a little bit, but anyway, just to show you, under the group, 
we have uh, an array of uh, 32 uh, bits since uh, we can have up to 32 groups if i will set one of the alarm on let's say um, let's say the temperature for example okay so we can see here that uh, now the first group is the bit is on because one of the alarms in the group are active same goes if i will go to the alarm state we said that we can have up to 1024 alarms this is why we have uh, this array and remember the id of the temperature alarm was one and we can see that the bit is on if i will set uh, here you can see the emergency on we can see now that id2 the b2 went on uh, set it off went off uh, alarm state zero is not in use okay let's see what others we have here so whether there are in the group there are uh, uh, alarms that are waiting to be acknowledged uh, a specific alarm that needs to be acknowledged so for example uh, these alarms waiting to be acknowledged because I didn't acknowledge them uh, from the alarm summary whether the alarm was cleared or not if there is any alarm active maybe you want to uh, to activate some buzzer or, or is there any alarm waiting to be acknowledged uh, whether the log was already created and what is the name and how many active alarms I have right now so since it's only temperature I have one if I will set again the emergency on, we can see now two active alarms. Now, as I mentioned uh, before in the presentation, we talked about uh, if I get an alarm, I want to activate some logic, okay? Send email, send SMS, uh, start the, the oven, stop the oven, start the air conditioning in the room and so on. So let's, let's do an example for it. Okay, so let's say that uh, when the temperature uh, will exceed 50 uh, uh, degrees, as we said, we get an alarm and I want to, for example, jump to another screen in my HMI. So let's do it really quick. I will create a new screen. Let's say I will call the screen room one. We can give it a label as well. Say so I will call it room one. Uh, okay, we can center it. We can, of course, uh, take the screen navigation. And place it here so we can go back from room one screen. And um, I think that's it. Now we can create a, a, a logic. So I will use, let's say, a positive transition bit. And I want to say that if in the alarm struct, the bit alarm state from ID1 is on, will, will go on, I want to set a bit to load room one screen. Okay, so I can give it a name, load screen room one. Now we'll go to my global actions. I can add an action and the trigger will be the bit which we are going to set load screen one, sorry, load screen room one. And we have many types of actions, as you know, we can start the buzzer, stop, play sound and many others. But in this case, I want to load the screen. And here we will select which screen I want to load and I will load room one screen okay so let's just download and see if it works
Okay. So in general, right now, what we expect to see is that when the temperature alarm will be triggered, the screen will be changed automatically to room one. So I will set the alarm temperature 55. We wait five seconds. And you can see room one was loaded automatically. So again, as I said, you can use this bit here to do whatever logic you want. Okay, uh, just to fill you with some more options we have in, uh, in regards to alarms, uh, in case you wish to acknowledge alarms by logic. So you can see under the toolbox in ladder, we have uh, the option to acknowledge alarms. I will not use it right now, but just to show you, uh, you can decide whether you want to acknowledge a, a single alarm, um, group, the whole group, or all alarms, um, we can uh, basically here under the actions, we can see that there is an, also an option in actions to clear and acknowledge all alarms, clear all alarms. Again, the global actions are triggered by a bit. Uh, so in that case, you can see that you can do it also from here. And you can also close the log file and zip it, uh, as I said at the beginning, the alarm log will keep filling up to 10,000 alarms. When 10,000 alarm is reached, a new log file will be open automatically. But if you don't want to wait for 10,000 alarms, you just want to close the file and take it for, for your own purpose, you can use even this action uh, from here. One more thing I wanted to show you in terms of designing the HMI. You see that you have uh, this icon here. So this is the preview of the banner. So in, in, in general, you can see that when you design your, your screen, you can see the preview of the banner in order to design it that will not hide any important elements while the banner is open. By the way, if you don't like the banner and you want uh, to be able to jump to the alarm summary uh, using your own icon, your own button, then it's also possible. If you remember here under the banner, I can select none, for example, and then I can create here, for example, let's say a button and under actions, you see there is an action which says load alarm summary. So in general, when I will press on the button, it will load the alarm summary. So you have a really high flexibility to select how to access the alarm, how to acknowledge them, how to reset them from code, from HMI, a really nice and flexible system. So that's it uh, for today. I hope that you find this webinar uh, informative and interesting. I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar. Thank you again.